Welcome to Energy Talks, a regular podcast series with expert discussions on power system testing topics. My name is Scott Williams from the podcast team at Omicron, and I will be your host. Hello, everyone. In this episode, which is part five of our Energy Talks mini-series called Digital Transformation in the Power Industry, we will address the concept of pattern recognition and how it is used to ensure the optimized quality of power system measurement data. We will also talk about how artificial intelligence, also known as machine learning, is used to perform pattern recognition on measurement data. Joining me to discuss this topic is David Gopp, data scientist and digital transformation expert at Omicron. David also joined me along with fellow Omicron digital transformation expert Lucas Klingenschmidt in Energy Talks episode 33, which is part four of our mini-series. David and Lucas discussed how data readiness and data validation play a key role in the digital transformation. This episode is a continuation of that discussion. Hello, David. Welcome back to Energy Talks. Hi, Scott. It's very nice to be back on air. Thank you again for being here for this continued discussion about the digital transformation in the power industry. David, could you give us a short overview of our last conversation in Energy Talks episode 33 about data readiness and data validation and their roles in the digital transformation of the power industry? For sure, Scott. So the last episode had a very strong focus on data, its integrity, its validity. So data validation is a kind of automatic check for the available data quality. Mm -hmm. Standards are available for many measurements, such as dissipation factor, power factor measurements, winding resistance, etc. So however, it is difficult to perform an evaluation based on standards, based on non-valid data or measurement data with poor measurement quality. So many experts in the data science area have already noted that the data quality will be the main problem of the 21st century, not the algorithms. Interesting. So in this episode, we will talk about pattern recognition as the next step in digital transformation. David, what exactly is meant by pattern recognition and how does it work? That's a really good question, Scott. So first of all, the question should be answered, what is a pattern? It is a particular way in which something is done, is organized or happens. A more visual definition would be the following. Any regularly repeated arrangement, especially a design made from a repeated lines, shapes, or colors on a surface. Mm -hmm. So pattern recognition is the automated recognition of patterns and regulatories in data. Furthermore, it is a classification problem, which could be either solved with supervised or unsupervised learning. The difference between both methods is that supervised learning assumes that a set of training data has been provided by an expert or any other user. Mm -hmm. In most cases, artificial intelligence, AI, is used nowadays. So basically, two different forms are used. So the one is statistical learning and the other probabilistic learning. David, how is pattern recognition related to data readiness and data validation? Yeah, the measurement usually consists of a measurement with several measurement points, for example, a voltage sweep, a frequency sweep, current sweep, etc. Pattern recognition of measurement data gives a lot of information about the quality and validity of measurements. Mm -hmm. Single measurement point is very hard to validate. As you can assume, you only have one point and let's say you would like to predict if it's good or not. It's pretty hard, right? Mm -hmm. So there are for sure examples where a single data point could be easily classified as invalid. When you look at dissipation factor, power factor results, negative values are not possible. Therefore, those points could be easily found. If you have a curve, for example, the shape of this curve is of high interest. If there is noise, if it's linear, if it's logarithmic, the trend, if it's negative, positive, neutral, and other factors give a lot of information. Another very interesting use case if you close the loop, looking, for example, at SFRA measurements, so sweep frequency response analysis. The results should match what the user is entering for the measurement he's executing. With pattern recognition, this could be a cross-check to have a valid data set and a high confidence regarding the quality of measurement data in order to draw the best conclusion. 
David, what are typical examples of how pattern recognition is used today? Actually, I think we have quite a bunch of listeners today. So I would like to do a small quiz with our listeners. Oh, this will be interesting. Okay, David, go ahead. Here is my quiz question. What is the most relevant asset for pattern recognition? Is it A, power transformers, B, rotating machines, C, current transformers, or D, overhead power lines? Mm. I will answer this question at the end of this episode, but I will be talking about it in this episode. Okay. I will now give you a small glimpse on the use case of pattern recognition today and their examples. So for example, power transformers, there is a PD pattern recognition quite often used at current transformers as well. At rotating machines, PD pattern recognition is as well quite often used, but as well vibration pattern recognition. On overhead lines, there is like a fall detection using pattern recognition. And there is a pattern recognition for system monitoring. David, what applications already exist for pattern recognition in the power industry? There are a variety of algorithms or software that perform pattern recognition. So object recognition is as well a kind of pattern recognition where objects in pictures are identified according to the binary data, more precise to the color scheme and size. Mm -hmm. If you look at the measurement data, to be more specific at the online and offline data, there are many applications available, especially in the partial discharge area. Omicron itself uses pattern recognition algorithms in the partial discharge monitoring software suite for rotating machines to automatically predict the different partial discharge patterns. Even the system providers for asset performance management systems, in short APMs, sometimes use pattern recognition for predicting various things such as load conditions of power transformers or how the thermal stress of a power transformer will influence the health of the respective power transformer. Okay. What are the benefits of using pattern recognition in power industry applications? That's a good question, Scott. So my point of view, there are multiple benefits. So pattern recognition helps the user in being faster, showing their most relevant data, and in some extent, predicting the assessment. Furthermore, if you think about the decreasing knowledge, less talents entering the energy domain, and more and more experts who are currently approaching the well-deserved retirement, there is a clear benefit. And furthermore, expert knowledge on demand in pattern recognition will help to bridge this period of time where fewer experts are out there assessing diagnostic measurements. David, are there different approaches to pattern recognition? As I mentioned beforehand, there are basically two different strategies nowadays known. One is supervised learning, and the other is unsupervised learning, as well known as clustering. Furthermore, there is statistical and non-statistical algorithms out there. Non-statistical are most probably probabilistic in nature. David, can you briefly describe the differences between these approaches? Probabilistic classifiers always have a probability for the label as a result, in addition to the predictive label. For example, if you classify a partial discharge, the result is corona discharge with a probability of 98%, for example. The clear advantage is that these types of algorithms output the confidence value as well as associated with their choice. This makes them more suitable to incorporate into larger machine learning or AI tasks in a way that partially or completely avoids problems of error propagation. The output is a percentage number which will be further processed. With statistical classifiers, and on the other hand, you only get one class or one label, which can lead to a greater uncertainty in combination with another algorithm in the sequence. So statistical classifiers, on the other hand, could be categorized in generative and discriminative algorithms. They simply predict the best label or category. Okay, thank you, David. Are there any challenges in implementing pattern recognition? As for all AI, Algorithms, the data quality and data preparation are a huge task. Data preparation deals with bringing the data into the right format, extracting key features from the data which describe the different instances in the best way. In addition to this, all the data should be standardized in order to retrieve the best score. Furthermore, depending on the pattern recognition task, the ethical aspects should be considered as well. 
for example, regional specific, country specific and human specific aspects. One example is pattern recognition in the voice, also known as speech recognition. The pronunciation of the same words is definitely one thing which has to be taken into account. In addition to this, different humans do have different frequencies when they are talking. For example, a strong accent and the person's education level. If someone is, for example, less educated and is using more simple words, or if someone is more educated and is using more complex words, this could lead to an ethical bias in the AI algorithm. What are the best ways to overcome these challenges? The IEC, as well as the European Union, were dealing about this topic quite a while and quite a lot. So actually, there are several strategies to overcome those challenges. I think every has advantages and some present even more disadvantages. Generally speaking, it is always vital to your algorithm if you gather as much regional data as possible from all over the world in order to have the right balance in your training data. Training data basically is the data which the algorithm uses for the training of the algorithm when doing supervised learning. You split your training data set into training and validation data. The training data is described beforehand, is used for training only, and the validation data is used to check how good your algorithm is performing in cases which the algorithm have not seen in training. Furthermore, there is a need for standardized data in order to reduce the ethical bias. By standardization is meant that only the data which is really needed by the algorithm is processed and the data which is referring to, for example, regional and manufacturer specific data is neglected or standardized through specific processes. David, how is Omicron currently working with pattern recognition in the development of its solutions? Can you give me some concrete examples? For sure, Scott. So one example has already been named, which is namely the pattern recognition for online partial discharge measurements used in the monitoring of rotating machines. This is a very effective way of periodically assessing the partial discharge patterns in an automatic way. There are basically four different patterns or failure types, namely noise, which is automatically neglected, end winding surface discharge, tracking, end winding discharge, sparking, and so on and so on. A second example Omicron is currently working on is the pattern recognition of the SFRA measurements. There are basically five different SFRA patterns possibly, including unknown, like there was something measured, but not the right thing. Zero check, which is like a zero line check. You're checking if your device is in a good state. Mm -hmm. End to end open, end to end short circuit, capacitive interwinding and inductive interwinding measurement. David, how will pattern recognition change and improve the overall user experience? Actually, this will help in guiding the user in the best way to a reliable assessment by predicting the pattern. The user will be more efficient in reviewing data. So if you think about you have one measurement, maybe it's not helping that much. But if you have to assess 100 to 200 measurements, it will help definitely quite a lot. The focus of the user will be only on the most relevant irregularities. But how does pattern recognition help users prevent errors and ensure data integrity? So pattern recognition helps in checking if the data is valid, if it's a valid measurement. In some cases, it helps in checking the entire loop, for example, for SFRA measurements. From entering the data to cross-check if the entered data fits the pattern which was measured. Furthermore, the shape of the curve shows some other indices about the measurement setup. If, for example, there was a poor grounding or poor clamping while measuring the dissipation factor or power factor or any other measurement, it will be shown in the shape of the curve. Now, coming back to our small quiz within this podcast episode. Oh, yeah. Okay. So my question was, what is the most relevant asset for pattern recognition? So A was power transformers, B rotating machines, C current transformers and D, overhead power lines. And what is the winner? And the winner is power transformers. So there are examples about the insulation diagnosis, power transformers protection, and the vibration as a short excerpt.
David, in issue two of Omicron Magazine, which came out in October 2022, you wrote an interesting article about the role that artificial intelligence plays in ensuring high data quality. Could you tell us a little about this article, please? For sure, Scott. So I was dealing about the topic quite a while ago. So starting in 2019, and I was thinking about how you could do a reliable assessment. And as you can imagine, you have quite a bunch of measurement points, right? So you have 1000 measurement points. You have two different charts. One is the phase, one is the magnitude. And therefore doing a reliable assessment is quite complex. So I was thinking, how can you improve in getting only reliable measurement results? And especially on site, because the testers or the engineers should enter or leave the substation with good measurement quality. So. I was thinking about how could it be done, starting with some small decision trees, so if else clauses or some tolerance bands and furthermore some fuzzy logic. I was quite involving that the topic validation and quality checking and came to the point that AI is definitely more suitable. So I was trying out some algorithms and I was quite surprised how good it was. So therefore I was taking these results and involving them further. And I was involving them that much that I handed in the paper in Stuttgart at the Hochspannung Symposium. So it's in Germany mm -hmm. and presented the paper and it got quite good feedback. So therefore I know that we are on the good track and there is a pain in the market where testers or engineers do have problems in getting high quality data and as well doing their assessment based on high quality and valid data. Very good. Well, David, thank you for sharing your knowledge and insights into this topic of pattern recognition and the role it plays in the digital transformation of the power industry in this episode of Energy Talks. It has been a pleasure to me being here today, Scott. I really enjoyed it, speaking about data analysis, data science, and as well pattern recognition. Okay, very good. Well, we'll keep an eye on this topic. Thank you very much again. And a big thank you to our audience for listening to this episode of Energy Talks. If you haven't already, be sure to listen to our other episodes in our mini-series called Digital Transformation in the Power Industry. Of course, be sure not to miss our episodes about other power system testing topics on your favorite podcast platform, YouTube, or on the Omicron website. We always welcome your questions and feedback. Simply send us an email to podcast at omicronenergy.com. Omicron has several years of experience in power system testing and offers you the matching solution for your application. Many of these Omicron solutions include innovative software tools that help you to make a smooth digital transformation, such as pattern recognition, which was the topic of this episode. For more information, be sure to visit our website at omicronenergy.com. Please join us to listen to the next episode of Energy Talks. Goodbye for now, everyone.